What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. Today I'm gonna to talk about four reasons why your vinyl wrap might fail in a recessed area. Recessed areas are very common areas for wrap failure. A lot of times it's just a matter of post heating. You know, if we stretch it into a recessed area where we have to stretch it into, like for example, behind the door handle, like the door handle cup area, you usually want to post heat that area. The film is going to be under tension the whole time. It's going to want to pop out and post heating will help set the material down. If you guys are looking for a video on how to post heat properly and the effects of how that works, check out my website, ckwraps.com. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you. It shows you how to post heat and the effect of post heating. It's amazing how well it works. Let's move on to reason number one. Reason number one why your wrap might fail is because of an unclean surface. You wanna make sure that you're prepping your panels properly. Make sure you're using some kind of a surface prep, at least 70% isopropyl alcohol or something similar offered by any particular brand for that matter. You know, we have to strip wax, grease, oil off of the surface. If we stretch the film into that area, into an area that has contaminated on it, like grease or oil or wax, the film isn't going to adhere as well as it should. So we have to make sure we strip everything off and that will give us a much better adhesion level when we go to stretch our film into that area. That is not the only reason why a wrap can fail in a recessed area, but that is one reason why, why a wrap will fail in a recessed area. How to check for that? Well, if you go to push the film back down, you keep pushing it down into that recessed area, you heat it, you push it down, you heat it, you push it down, and it just seems to want to lift all the time with no visible sign of anything underneath it, you know, no, no texture of some kind, basically dirt or maybe paint lifting off or anything like that. You don't feel anything and it's just very smooth and the, and the, the wrap is snapping out of that area very quickly. Most likely you have some kind of grease, oil or wax underneath your wrap. You're gonna have to rewrap at that point. You don't really have any choice. So that is one reason right there. I'm gonna use tack reducer, Vivid Tack Reducer as grease in this situation, okay? We're gonna take my cloth and we're gonna make sure we give a fair evaluation here. This way I'm going to clean off about half right here and then I'm going to add the tack reducer to the other half over here. You're going to see the difference in, in grab that it will have from side to side. So again, one side's clean, one side's not. Let's take a bit of the Avery. The tack reducer is a wonderful product. You just don't want to put it into an area that's recessed because if, that, if you have to stretch the film into that area, what's going to happen is you're going to end up having the film pop out or lift out of that area. Grease and something else that's a heavier contaminant will even cause that effect to be greater. So we want to make sure that we're doing our best job to ensure that the film or the, the, the surface of the vehicle has been prepped properly beforehand. In this case right here, you're gonna see that there's a, there's a bit of a haze to the tack reducer. That is what it's supposed to look like. And we're gonna take our Avery and put it across both sides. There aren't many other ways that your film is gonna fail in a recessed area. These are the main reasons why it's going to fail, fail, okay? It's the things that I've covered today are the, are the main reasons. Okay, let's squeegee it down fair. Okay, end to end, so we're good. Now let's, let's lift the film up on one side and let's lift the film up on the other side. Let's make sure this is fair here. And let's just see what we have as far as grab goes, okay? Come right across that body line. So I'm gonna pull, and it's it's feeling like it's feeling good. It's got some good bond. Okay, let's check out this side right here. Much easier, okay? So the fact that it's much easier, it's just it's just pulling off like no problem at all. This is a common reason of failure. Okay, you have to make sure that there are no contaminants in your on your panel at all, or especially in the recessed areas. Those are the most critical. Reason number two, and I'm gonna take you over to a panel that's failing in a recessed area. Because you stretched it into a recess that's just too deep for the film to actually handle. Uh, this area on like sprinter vans and things like that tends to fail quite often. Uh, so post heating is very important. If you guys are looking for a post heating video, go check out my website, ckwraps.com. There's gonna be a link there for you. Uh, I show you what 
the effect a post heating has. The way we check this right now is to push the film down. We're gonna push the film down and we're gonna see what happens. So right now it looks like the film is just popping out. There is maybe potentially a chance to salvage this right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat it and hope that we can push this down and maybe even post heat it afterwards. So as we have air in here, it's gonna get stuck. Right now I can see that there are no real glue lines or glue rings or anything like that, um, which means like to me, it looks like the film hasn't separated from the adhesive. And on top of that, it also shows me that the paint isn't lifting off and there's no dirt behind it. So could be one of two things here, um, just too much stretch for the actual film or this area wasn't cleaned properly. So we're gonna poke a little hole there and get in there and heat it down. Same thing with this guy over here. Poke a little hole, heat it, push it down. Now what we wanna do is we wanna post heat this, okay? Is it gonna be perfect? No, because I can see now I'm starting to get bubbles over here. Um, this area should have been done a little bit more thorough in the beginning. Um, well, we would have just heated the area immediately after, and then we wouldn't be dealing with this right now. It's not gonna look the prettiest because we are messing around with the film. So I can actually see some glue rings are in that area. The film has been sitting like this for quite a while, right? So the film sitting under tension shows me, or sorry, it shows me that the film's been sitting under tension for a while in this area while it's been lifted up. That's why we have a slight glue line there and there, really low. I even still have a couple of very small bubbles. These are actually very tricky to get out because when they get very small, the glue tends to not let the air out properly but it is working, it is getting a little bit better, okay? So it's gonna, you're able to fix this in this case. Um, not perfect, like as you can see, we can see the finish is not the greatest, but we can get the air bubbles down and make the finish a little bit more presentable. To avoid this, we would have post heated right after installing and we wouldn't have most likely had this issue. Uh, to me, it's showing me that it just simply wasn't post heated as opposed to there being contaminant underneath the, uh, under, underneath the film basically or on the paint. So it probably was wiped down, it just wasn't heated and set into place afterwards. And that's reason number two. So reason number two, you can actually check to see how the film is sticking into the recessed area. If the film is still sticking into that recessed area and you can push it down and it seems to not want to snap out right away, most likely you just didn't heat, post heat that area properly or in any kind of other case, slap some primer 94 or adhesive promoter into that area. Definitely adhesive promoter in the area on that panel would have held the, would have held the wrap down and that would have prevented it from lifting at all. But the less lazy way of doing it would have just been to post heat the area. And you saw when I was post heating it or when I was heating it, I was able to, to get that air down. We'll see how long it holds, but typically you want to post heat that area to a particular temperature, okay? It's not just like heat it up to 100 and call it a day. No, we have to heat it to a particular temperature to make sure it's settled. Uh, and that will reset the memory in the film. Let's move on to reason number three. Reason number three is a less common reason, but if it ever happens, you'll know. Uh, and there's one way to check, and it's pretty simple. If your paint fails, you're gonna see it through the wrap, essentially. Now, when you go to push that wrap back down into the area where the paint fails, you're going to see the, the film actually just come right up immediately. But if you actually take your time and push the wrap down, you're going to see that there's gonna be a profile to the wrap, essentially. You're gonna, you're gonna definitely feel the edge of the paint and the edge, and the edges of that area that had lifted when the paint failed. Okay, that isn't so common, but it can be more common on repainted or resprayed areas, uh, especially from bumpers. Front and rear bumpers, they tend to be you know, re resprayed without anyone ever knowing because they got into a little fender bender in a parking lot. People think their car is in great shape, but it was just a little fender bender, so they just got resprayed, and they don't do that great of a job usually with a respray as opposed to manufacturer straight from the straight from the car manufacturer. They do a much better job. Aftermarket, yeah, you can get anything, especially when you're going through insurance, you should kind of go in the cheapest, fastest route possible. Um, again, being able to check that is important because you actually have to know if it's your fault or if it's just the substrate itself. If it's the substrate itself, it's not your fault. You're not really gonna warranty that. There's nothing you can do about that. The wrap's gonna have to come off the car. Customer will have to go get it painted properly or resprayed. And then once the, fit, once the paint cures, they're gonna have to bring it back and have it rewrapped. Huge pain. So 
try to check vehicles and check them before you wrap them to make sure they haven't been resprayed. If they have been resprayed, you always have to let people know about the possible consequences of wrapping over a resprayed panel, okay? Um, you can have them sign off on something, whatever it is you choose to do, but there is that possibility that it can happen. It can also just happen on wrap removal. Let's move on to reason number four. Now, reason number four, uh, I've seen it happen with every single brand there is, and it's adhesive separation, okay? So adhesive separation is when the material itself and the adhesive pretty much fails. Uh, this is not your fault, but I tend to warranty this because getting this, getting warranty from a manufacturer for this reason is a huge pain in the butt. Uh, a lot of them won't even do it. From my experience, uh, they're just like, yeah, you didn't, you didn't do this properly, so you didn't install it properly. Should have used the seam. Um, sometimes you don't really want to use a seam because you don't have good body lines to use a seam. Um, so using a seam all the time doesn't make a lot of sense. And you know, around the hinges on my Jeep, for example, the bubbling that was going on there, and I'll throw a little clip in there for you, that bubbling that was going on around the hinges was actual adhesive separation from the film. It's a wonderful brand, doesn't mean Hexus is terrible, it is a great brand, but there was just too much tension in that area for the film to handle, or for the adhesive to handle, on that particular side of the car. It wasn't on, it wasn't on every single hinge, it was only on, it was on three out of four of the doors actually, not on all of them. Uh, but for some reason it worked better on one door. Couldn't tell you why, all I know is that the adhesive failed. When I go to remove the wrap, you can clearly see the adhesive stuck to the paint and the adhesive not stuck to the film anymore. When, and how you check for this, okay? So there's a way to check for this. When you push the film down on those bubbles that you see bubbling up, you're going to actually feel like a ring for the most part. It's gonna be like a, a glue line, a massive glue line, really thick, pretty heavy and the film is gonna pop out right away. It won't feel the same as paint because the edge won't be, or sorry, it's paint failing because the edge won't be as sharp or jagged. It will be more rounded and smooth for the most part because it's just glue and it's like a, it's like a balloon, it's like a bubble, it's just bubbling up. While paint will be different, paint will chip off. So you'll feel more of a jagged edge for the most part with paint than you would if the adhesive just failed. When the adhesive fails, you know, and these things just take a bit of experience. So these are ways to check on, check to see if it's your fault or if it's the actual substrate or material. Two of the reasons you weigh against you out of the four, you know, it's your fault if you didn't prep the service properly and it's your fault if you overstretched basically without a seam or without post heating when you should have used a seam or post heated. Those are, that's your fault. But again, pain failing and the adhesive failing is not your fault but getting warranty for that is a bit of a pain in the butt. So guys, I hope this video was informative and helpful for you. I'm um, looking forward to doing some more videos for you. A lot of you had asked this question about how to check for that sort of thing. So I wanted to do this video on that and that's about it. Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. Take care.